um, Suniti has chosen for us today verse 61. Verse 61. Manara smarana prana madura madura dhamma yugala vilasha smirati sara sadhya sadhanai iha boyarnai ai tattva sarva tattva sara and Advaita Das translation the very life of the mind is smarana and the sweetest remembrance is the pastimes of Radha and Krishna this is the goal and this is the practice and there is nothing more than this this truth is the essence of all regulative principles. Now, there's so much here, I think I'll repeat. <laughs> the very life of the mind is smarana. And the sweetest remembrance is the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. This is the goal and this is the practice. And there is nothing more than this. The truth is the essence of all regulative principles. <clears throat> and it's a very sweet verse that Suniti has given us today, and it contains everything, really, that we need to know to practice and to understand where we are situated in our, in our practice. And what's particularly special about it is that it, it helps us to understand the um, relation between material experience and spiritual experience. And I'll try to explain why I think that's true. It tells us how to live in, in relation to the, to the spiritual world. It tells us how to live as Sadikavesh, but relate to our own Shidavesh at the same time, that we have one foot in material world, but an experience the other foot in spiritual world, spiritual body. So it tells us, Rade, so nice, welcome. It tells us in a way about the, the, the door between the two, about the passage between the two, the relation between the, the two. And this goes through this very well-known idea of smarana, which is one of the, the basic practices of, of bhakti. The, according to this verse, it's the main practice of, of bhakti. So the mind is material, we know. Consciousness, material consciousness, the, the home of material consciousness. And yet, through smarana, we have a relation to spiritual experience. Smarana is a way of connecting our mind to the, to the lila. And that's exactly what the verse tells us we should do. In smarana, the best thing we can do with smarana, in smarana, is to remember the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. This is not only the goal, but it's actually the practice. It's what we do when we're doing bhakta, bhakti. So smarana is a, is a special, almost paradoxical practice. We talked about it in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita class some. Smarana means two things, doesn't it, in Sanskrit? It means remembering and it means thinking about. So it points to some sort of relation, some sort of experience we've already had in the past remembering something that's happened to us that's in our lives as part of our consciousness and then thinking about part is right now we need to connect to something connect with thought think about krishna think about mm, the pastimes of radha and, and krishna as the verse uh, tells us so it has this very special relationship about something that's already happened and something that's still happening 
remembering and thinking about. And to take remembering first, what's very special about remembering, it means obviously that we've already seen it. We've already had some experience of Krishna or Radha Mohan or whatever we're doing smarana of. And now we're thinking about an experience we've already had. And by thinking about it, we're having a new experience of something we've already had. If we can do smarana, it means, in a way, that we've had this contact with the Radha Mohan, that we know what it is. We have some experience, maybe only small, minor experience, but that we already have experienced Radha Mohan. If, we, if smarana makes meaning for us, it means that we already have some spiritual experience. That's a very strong and very encouraging thing. So, so when we're part of our practice is to think about God, to think about the Radha Mohan, we can also take great comfort in knowing that when we're thinking about them, they are there. That somehow we're uh, in a partial spiritual experience of them being there. If we can conjure them, that means that somehow they're, they're present. That doesn't mean completely present, it might be just a trace of an idea, of a thought, of a memory, but it means that there's a connection. And this is very nice in the, um, in the, which line? The second line, Madura Madura Dhamma, which means literally sweet, sweet home, or sweet, sweet abode. And the uh, Advaita Das translates um, the sweetest remembrance. <coughs> it's the sweetest remembrance. But actually, literally, which is a very nice translation, but literally it means the sweetness that lives in us. Or to go where the sweetness is living. <coughs> and that sweetness, again, if we're feeling it, if we're thinking it, that means somewhere its abode is in us. The abode of the Madura, 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 the sweet sweetness, is in us. That Dhamma is not some faraway country that we've never been to. It's something that, it's an abode, it's a home, and a home we live in. So somehow, somehow, this sweetness is living in us. And so this is what I, this is how I understand Smarana. Somehow, somehow being reminded of what's inside us, being reminded of this presence of Radha Mohan in our own souls, in our own hearts. Not that we're participating in the, in the Leela, not that we're fully absorbed in the spiritual world, but that there's, some, that there's a presence. And this agrees with the idea that we hear about so often, also in Bhagavad Gita, that we as Atma, we are part and parcel of the Paramatma. So that our soul is a part of the soul of God. There's a little bit of Radha Mohan in us. There's a little bit of Radharani's energy in us, a part and parcel of Radha Mohan or Radharani. So when we talk about this sweetness in the home, in the abode, the Dhamma, the Madura Madura Dhamma. <laughs> then we're talking about the sweetness of Radha that's in our hearts, that's smiling to us from our hearts. And that we also identify around us. I'll come back to this idea of, of seeing Radha in the world, which it seems to me I talk about a lot, maybe too much. But when we When we recognize the sweetness at home, in the heart, then we're, in a way, recognizing that the Radha is peeking up at us from our hearts. We see Radha's smile, smiling through our feelings. We see uh, Radha's naughtiness peeking up at us from, from our souls, from our hearts. So in a way, we can detect through Smarana this presence, 
of the energies of Radharani in our own hearts and souls. The, the loving ones, the, the playful ones, the naughty ones. And then it goes the other way too, because when I see the pleasure in your face, when I see the smile on your face, then I also see a trace of the Radharani in your heart. I know the pleasure that's in your smile is coming from your own soul and from Radharani smiling inside you. And when you smile, I smile, and you smile, and you smile, and we're, when we're sort of connecting this pleasure of Radharani. It's my favorite example of Radharani. It's this pleasure that you feel in these muscles when the face, human face smiles. It's just irresistible. <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, uh, actually, it's interesting that this became my meter that I'm in the right place. Yeah. Sometimes this like freezes in this position, like, like in a smile, which that you can't go down, mm. you know, and this I felt many times, and especially when we are uh, totally inside some nice Radha Kata or, you know, uh, like smile comes naturally. I remember when in summer I was in Germany with Jananda, Raseshwari, Sumiti, Varsundra, and actually, and others, of course, there. And um, there we were so much uh, talking, sharing. And I remember my smile couldn't go down. You know, I was all the time feeling like this here and can't go down, you know. So this you nicely said, you know, <laughs> it's felt in a smile. Well, yeah, think of a baby, you know, a baby is too small to learn how to smile, doesn't understand jokes. Maybe you can tickle a baby, and, but it's just this pleasure. A baby feels pleasure when it smiles. And this is the, this is the original pleasure of recognizing the Radharani in your in your soul. So this is how I understand smarana, remembering and thinking, thinking about. It's remembering and thinking about this pleasure that you already have inside you. And the challenge is not to go out in the forest, go to heaven, go to wherever you need to go and find it. The challenge is uh, opening it up, realizing that you have it inside you already, realizing that it's already happening inside you realizing that it's already an experience you're, you're having. And this is then what I mean, what I think uh, Narottama Dastakura means when he talks about the life of the mind. So the very first line of the verse was, the very life of the mind is smarana. So there are lots of things to say around the sweetness, but this is what the function of the mind is to do. This is what the, makes the mind live. It's, uh, um, the word is prana, yeah, life. Smarana prana, the life of the mind is uh, smarana. It, what's, it's what gives life. Gurudev often talks about how you, you look at a dead body and there's, you see there's no life. Well, it's because there's no soul. And what gives life to a body? What gives life to the material consciousness with consciousness, which is called the mind, this is this smarana, the remembering of this joy, of this love that is the only presence um, in, inside you. And then the next thing he says, Narutama Daska Takuri, is that this is both our goal and our practice. Both our goal and our practice. So to reach this smarana, to perfect it, to have full awareness of Radharani in us, that's the goal. And to get there, the practice is to repeatedly think about her, try to realize her and, and Krishna, the Leela itself going on somehow in our own souls. 
But in Dhamma Dhamma is inside us just as much as it's outside us. It's not a, it's not a place, a material place. It's not a physical place. But in Dhamma Dhamma, it's a spiritual place. That means it can be anywhere. And it's in spiritual territory. So in my understanding, but in Dhamma Dhamma is in everyone's soul, inside everyone. Now, Ananta Das Babaji, in his commentary, calls this prana, which just means life, essentially, he calls it life force, the life force of the mind. <clears throat> which again, it makes us think that the energy keeping us alive, whenever we hear the word energy, shakti, we think about Radharani as the energy of pleasure, ladani shakti, and the energy of love, prema shakti. So when Anantaras Babaji says this is life force, life energy, my, my, my thinking goes directly to Radharani, and I think this smarana is an expression of the, the shakti, the, it's a Radha shakti, it's the energy of Radharani. So smarana isn't energy itself, but it's kind of an expression of this, this energy. It's carrying along the loving energy of so let's read a little bit about, uh, let's read a little bit what Ananta Das Babaji says then. He says in this Tripadi, in this uh, verse, composed by the blessed author, the main item of Raganuga Bhakti, namely Smar Smaranga Bhakti, is revealed. First it is said, says Ananta, Manara smarana prana. Um, and he gives then several examples of how smarana makes things appear. He gives actually four examples in the first few lines of the commentary. And they are examples, each of them, of how Radharani appears in our lives. So he says, I, I, I read again, I cite, When we see the flash of lightning, we dread the rolling of the thunder, for we remember that the sound is coming along with the lightning. So the mind sees something, the eyes register the lightning, and our hearts feel fear. Our hearts, our souls react. The mind sees and the heart reacts. Second example. We can tell how delicious the food is that we have enjoyed before in the past, even if we do not, know, do not savor it now, for we can rec recollect it, recollect its relish. We can tell how delicious the food is that we have enjoyed before, even if we do not savor it now, for we can relect, recollect its relish. Sorry, hard reading. So we see the food or we smell the food and we've, we have this memory, this smarana of the food, uh, something we've enjoyed, gave, gave us pleasure in our, in our hearts, and we enjoy that even though we're only seeing it with our eyes or smelling it with our material nose. So again, there's a material connection, there's a material experience connected with something in our hearts, connected with something in our souls. Third example, when we see a beautiful flower, we can say how it smells, for that fragrance was so sweet to us before. It's very simple. It's a memory of a feeling, and a memory of a feeling is smarter. <clears throat> It's a connection between the mind, which is the facts, and the emotion that we had when we had the facts last time. This is, this is what it means to connect material experience with sp spiritual life. So, Udava, it, it seems to be that always when we uh, explain some experience, we are not uh, in this experience, but we are in the feeling of this experience. I think we cannot explain anything without feeling. If I just give you pure mathematics to explain the color of the carpet here, 
you will not understand. Or you will, you will experience nothing. I could give you the wavelength of all the colors on the floor. You will look like a dead man. But if I put it yellow and green, it's green like the grass, and it's blue like the sky, then you have an experience of it. You know, I, I'm very, very grateful to on this verse, uh, on the explanation of this verse, because it's very essential of whatever I hear before. <laughs> mm. It's really, mm, it's remind me, you said that uh, it is remembering in the same time is uh, Just thinking about thinking about mm. so it's, it's uh, in me uh, come came some impression is is like uh, uh, remem remembering of the eternal present presence yes like uh, pilgrimage in the present I mean we are recording something what exists eternally exist we are immediately connected with a term remembering usually something what is past mm -hmm. but by remembering in this case we are connected with the present We're that's it that's it exactly yeah so it's almost saying thinking about is remembering <coughs> that is to say thinking about is always being in the feeling of something that you've been experiencing before yeah like like you said actually there are two types of smart and um remembering and thinking of mm -hmm. yeah? in, in one way yeah we can say that thinking of is also like remembering but also there's an there is part of imagination where yeah. we can imagine something new mm -hmm. in connection with uh, for example with Radha and Krishna but I wanted to say how I was talking two days ago I think or for yesterday, yesterday, no, Monday, Monday was two days ago. Mm -hmm. No idea which day. No today. matter. No. Anyway, you're thinking about and remembering. Yes. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was uh, actually. We were talking here actually about also Smarana and how uh, in life we can even see some things or some events, and which are maybe not directly connected with the object or subject of our smaranam, but it can remind us. And then we enter into, the, into smaranam. Like, for example, uh, when we are driving on a highway through Croatia, there goes there go uh, many trucks that have the title Barshan, <laughs> you know, on the sides. And immediately we are reminded of Rindavan. So in that way, this is just a word which is not even, let's say, grammatically correct in the name of Vrindavan, but again reminds us about Radha and Krishna. So and, and Smarana, we know this is the main process. Mm -hmm. So we should always try and see everywhere. Radhika and Krishna, our Ishtadev, because we can do that through mm. colors, through smells. Mm. I mean, when I feel the smell of incense, immediately person reminds. Yeah. It reminds us, oh, about our Ishtadev, mm. or when we, for example, hear the flute music, or even in far away, I love to hear, for example, devotees when they do Harinam in town. You know, some, I know, Iskon devotees, you know. I'm not in Iskon, but I, I like to see them, you know, because immediately reminds me of Radha and Krishna. Mm. Yeah. But the consequence, yeah, please. I, I will just. I uh, have decided to give a few examples how uh, remember how uh, Smarana is become reality. I visited uh, one year ago one seminar where was a lot of meditations, and by meditations, uh, a lady who led this seminar, he created reality. It was 
inside of us and by this we receive the real physical effect for curing or something else. For example, um, she uh, gave us how does it anesthesia? It means uh, to make some part of body not feeling pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just by meditation, we received result in some of body part of body with effect. Even nothing doing physically, just by working with consciousness, with this, this mm -hmm. mind. And it's my own experience how it's work. <laughs> it's like some magic, but what we are thinking become real, real. Or for example. Uh, hypnosis. Uh, it's nothing that happened physically. The person just telling was this coin on your hand very hot. And he receiving burning even in nothing. <coughs> or, mm. or nothing even in no in coin. <laughs> it's become real. Yeah. Thank you. I think the consequence of this idea with all these really nice examples is that <laughs> We cannot understand anything of our world without this spiritual experience behind it. Without smarana. All understanding, we, if I just talk about the wavelength of the color of the floor, you understand nothing. But if it links to the feeling you've had from your life, spiritual feeling, then it's understandable. So that in the extreme, only things that are have this spiritual texture to them can be understood by human beings and to realize this is to come to the point where the spiritual becomes the reality so instead of sitting in a room of facts full of facts and thinking back about the flower i smelled once and then looking at the flower through my empirical eyes my factual eyes they become one so my material senses and my spiritual smarana come together and become one, so that the only reality is the spiritual one. And that we realize that the, the material sense reality is not reality. Am I making sense? Yeah. Huh? I want to con in connection with this, say that for remembering, we need to have the experience of something. That we can remember it yeah. yeah we can imagine some things of course but if we experienced something then we can remember it for example if i tell you now there is a rose in front of you that you imagine a rose in front of you and you smell it you will know what's the smell of the rose because you tried it you have it imprinted in your mind you know. So in that way, when we in your soul, in, in your, your feelings, soul, in your feelings, yeah. So when we have some experiences and more and more experiences in our spiritual life, our smaranam can go deeper and deeper. In in the beginning, smaranam is connected with the, for example, reading texts of the acharyas who are telling their own experiences. But through time, as we get experiences, that smaranam goes deeper because we also can remember our own experiences and the feelings that we felt. So we get these experiences directly or through the uh, through uh, other Vaishnavas and other ach acharyas who. We're writing about it or talking about it. Mm. So, so, so the Prabhu also experience of the experience who have experience have the same effect seems to be. Mm -hmm. right. And the fully realized soul will have the shared experience, but there'll, there'll be one experience. My experience and yours will be the same if, if we were fully realized. Soul, soul realized because our souls would be merged so what you feel of the flower would be the same thing as what i feel of the flower this is the the most advanced stage if you like of of realization uh, 
uh, shall we continue? <laughs> there was one more example that uh, Anatolis Papaji had of this phenomenon, and that was uh, of a, uh, a child who cannot speak, who burns himself. Let's see. The, the, this is Anatolis, Anatolis speaking now. The little speechless child places its hand only once into the fire <laughs> and never again. Rather, when he sees fire, he backs away, for he remembers that its touch will burn, burn him and hurt him. So again, it's not the, it's not the, the data, the fact, the science of the fire that he remembers. It's the feeling. <clears throat> It's, it almost seems trivial and mundane, but it's the feeling that he will always have in his heart and not in his brain that will keep him from putting his hand in the fire again. And then Ananta Daspabji continues, Although we use or accept gross matters through our gross senses, we will not experience anything if our minds are not at it. In this way, the mind, which is the center of all senses, may be incorporeal. It is able to give us all kinds of experiences. So this comment is a, a bit confusing, I find. It's saying that these emotional experiences, these feelings, these what we've been calling spiritual experiences, come back to the mind. They become connected to the mind. So in some way, the mind has a very close relation with the spirit and the feelings that we have of the mental experiences. So the mental experiences always have a close connection with the spiritual experiences. Who do you want to? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> he was mentioning that uh, we will not feel it if we are not in it, yeah? Something like that? Yeah. You say? Yeah. yeah. This is similar when we are eating. We can eat mechanically. And we will, will, I mean, we will get the food and all is okay. But shall we really feel the food if we quickly eat and not focus on the tastes and the feelings, texture, taste. If we are focusing then, we will feel it. So actually similarly in our bhajana, we are using our mind. Mind is a tool. And for example, when we do chanting, we can do mechanical chanting. Today Gurudev was talking when was initiation about this, that we need to be in that, to really feel, to see that, it's, that our chanting is not mechanical, just I will do it and I am finished. But the point is to really be focused during chanting. And <clears throat> I was, I, so now I can't remember from who I was reading, but I was reading that I think from Vinod Baba, some text I saw uh, that by focusing our mind, we actually make space for Radha and Krishna to dance in our mind. If we put some other things in our mind, there is no space for them to dance there. So mm -hmm. when we are chanting, we need to allow them to enter our mind, see them entering our thoughts and dance in our mind. Allow them to be there present. In that way we are, even when we are chanting or doing anything, we are remembering them, allowing them to enter our mind. And by focusing, again I will say what I said a few days ago, what I heard from Tony Robbins, from here, say uh, I, just one sentence. 
where the focus goes, energy flows. And the mind is controlled by focus. On what are we focusing on? So, okay. <laughs> hmm. maybe also Nantes Baba Julia after say something Nuts. about that. He, he, he does. Okay. Yeah. But, it's, uh, but it's very nice what you say. And, and we could ask why, when we focus, when we're one pointed, as Gurudev says, or we're in Stai Bhava, as, as many say. Then the, then the material sensations become minimized and all that's the only space left is for the spiritual ones, for the dancing. It's a little bit what Anatta Das Prabhupada says now as he continues, and I'll read. From beginning less time, the human mind has been turned away from God and has become so polluted by thinking of mundane objects that it constantly billows on high and low waves of thoughts, of small and large sense enjoyments, just as high and low waves billow on the ocean. So it seems like we have two different problems, or two not different problems, two related problems. The one is that we turn away from God, and the other is that we're polluted in mundane problems, mundane facts. And of course, the solution is, there's one solution to both problems, and that's focus. And focusing, then we're no longer polluted by the mundane, and when we focus, then we're not turned away from God anymore. How possible, uh, how possible for the soul which have contact with sweet Lord to turn from Him? What's Means that? Something more attractive for soul. No, it's the mind that turns, not uh, the soul. Okay, mind. And the mind is always finding something it thinks is more attractive. But it's yes. written here the Smarana for Radha Krishna is. Life it's, uh, uh, itself for the mind. How it's uh, concerned? Yeah, how it's possible that it turned at some time away from God? But then it's the mind is dying or dead or half half alive or the mind is always confused about what it gets pleasure from. No, it's always thinking about material pleasures and seeking to increase material pleasures. And forgetting about spiritual. No, I understand your question, though. But uh, you're absolutely right. The mind uh, doesn't like it. Sorry. The heart doesn't turn to anything better. The heart has only one source of pleasure, and that's God. But the mind has pleasure from all sorts of things. And then Baba, Babaji turns to the uh, intelligence, which is the faculty of the mind. And he says, <clears throat> our intelligence cannot accept all thoughts, only particular thoughts are ca captured by the intelligence. So it cannot have a, a picture of the world itself, of reality itself. It only can identify facts and small things. It has a, it's myopic, it has a narrow focus. And so it cannot see the divine reality because it cannot see the, the it can, cannot see beyond the material objects in front of the material senses. And we can only capture the divine through our spiritual senses, which see everything. And that's what a spiritual sense is. It's a sense that can sense everything at once all of the divine at once. So we're only capturing with our senses a little bit of reality, which is why we take so long to be impressed by the divine. We only see small bits of facts, 
small bits of pleasure and nothing comparing to the complete cosmic experience of, of the divine. In a way, we need to learn to, if we could capture everything with the mind, then we would be in the soul. Is that a way of putting it? Babaji goes on. <clears throat> what to speak of the waking state? Even in a state of slumber, the waves of sensual impressions billow on. And this, and this state we thus call svapna, or dream. Only when the state of deep sleep enters, the waves of thoughts stop. The practicing devotee performs all his plays with this mind. For when the mind is not concentrated on bhajan, it may proceed in a mechanical way for a long time. But the fruit of bhajan, namely prema, will not be yielded. So popping about, looking for the, the, uh, the small experiences, the small sense experiences, the mechanical ones, the factual ones, will not bring us prema. And again, Ananta Das Babaji says, through the practice of bhajan, which is attained by the grace of the Lord and his devotees, the mind, which is muddled by thoughts of sensual desires, is purified and gives up its experiences of sensual thoughts that are unrelated to Krishna. So this is something we hear often, the mind can be purified through bhajan. Because bhajan makes us relate directly to our own spiritual experience. <clears throat> bhajan is putting our mind in the service of Radharani, making her active in our heart instead of our mind active. The, the point here is, mind, in a way, is searching for pleasure yes and we see that and if our bhajan is mechanical our practice is only mechanical pleasure will not come we of course want pleasure of radhika but we are conditioned that Especially in the beginning, we are also searching for pleasure, to our happiness also. Yeah? So, what happens with the devotees who are mechanically always doing, trying to do bhajan, mechanically chanting, mechanically doing any, uh, anything, any seva, what happens is that they become dry because in one way they are trying to do this feeling even maybe guilty that they are not receiving anything back and maybe that they are not worth it or whatever uh, but the point is that in bhajana we should feel happiness also.
uh, it's muted or not. No, it's okay. So <coughs> we are actually, if we are feeling something in our bhajan, this helps us and helps our mind to go to search more it's exactly in that point. direction. That's exactly the point, yes. Because if it's boring and we are doing do it like forcefully, mechanically, we can do it sometime. Yeah, we can hit our head and say, do it, do it. But this can go just for some time. After some time, we'll say, I'm fed up. I don't want this. That's why it's important that we also watch. How do we feel? Like, for example, if some some devotee comes to me and says, I'm doing this, this, this. I just ask him, are you happy? Just that question. I ask him, are you happy? And if they are happy, who am I to change that? You know? If they are happy in their practice. And we need to sometimes question ourselves. Are we happy? Yeah, are we feeling are we fulfilled in this? Are we progressing? Is there some change in us? Our minds? Are we more attracted to Radhika? Or we are just trying something, pushing, 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 you know, and nothing happening? Why, why there is a difference between Vaidi and Raganuga? For me, Vaidi means I will push through. I will use my muscles to push through everything. And Raganuga for me feels I will be pulled by love. I will be pulled by Radhika's love. I will do something, of course, not that I will not do nothing, but I will be pulled. So there is a difference between pushing through or being pulled through. So that's my and mind here plays a role in this. Thank you. Let's come up and then we'll stop. Oh, I have to be quick because of the kirtan. Radi, radi. I have a question because um, my mind is strong, but he don't needs pleasure. He is uh, the whole my whole life. I had challenges. I had to work, and it's. So, so saying, a pleasure for me to be challenged with my mind, to be trained mm. with my mind, and the the loving f feelings they coming from my heart, and when I'm in my heart, I, I feel I'm totally satisfied, and when I have some feelings, material, nice or spiritual, sometimes I don't know. Um, but then my mind came, and he wants to do more. Not only chanting is boring for him. This is my my problem. <laughs> that is that oh this and and he, only this chanting is automatically. Then it becomes automatically when it's boring for my mind. <laughs> Listening is easier. But what can I do when I'm chanting and it's my mind says whoa go to this go to this and he wants to do everything and need challenge. How can I challenge my mind with chanting? You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's all that he's fixed. Hmm. Are you going to ask? No, just, I just wanted just briefly, to... Briefly, and then we have to stop. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say that uh, uh, you love challenges. My mind. Your mind, mind loves challenges. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, make a challenge to chant and always remember them. And just and see them dancing. Make that challenge, if your mind likes challenge. How Guru Dev said, try to do it two, one, two, three hours per day for one week, and you will see big change in one week. But this is not work for my mind. Ah, then Pleasure. give give him better challenge, but in that connection, in connection with your bhajan. Think about it. Play with it. Yeah, play with it. Make it a play. But play which is 
directed towards Radha and Mohan. Yeah, maybe your mind needs this entertainment. Okay, yeah, why not? But just change the game. Direction of the game. That's the point. Think about it. Uh, I cannot give you a direct answer. I can like that, give you an idea. But you need to see what will best work for you okay. to change the focus. Naruto me datta kuki. Ja. Teraz ja. babaji ki. Ja. Gurudev ki. Ja. 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 Shri Radhe.